Welcome back to Azure Terraformer. I get a lot of questions on my live streams, and this one stood up because it's a common security concern when working with Terraform. Should you put secrets in state? Can it even be avoided? And if you do have to put secrets or sensitive information into your state files, how do you properly secure state? Listen how I answer this question. Even though I answer it for the Azure platform, the same principles can be applied on whatever cloud platform you choose to use. I see Abjit. And he says, how to secure a state file in Azure where we place that, like storage account, any container? So that's a good question, Abjit. Um, um, I often use Azure storage accounts as a uh, backend for my uh, Terraform, and I put state files in Azure storage. Um, the way that you sec secure that storage account is um, you know, using Azure RBAC, right? So when you configure Terraform to talk to your back end, you don't necessarily have to use the same credentials that you use to provision your infrastructure, right? So that's an important caveat to, to make sure that you're aware of. Like oftentimes it's very easy. And even on my channel, like I off, because I'm just like me doing my thing, I often just use the same service principle, credential, whatever, to, you know, establish connectivity to the Terraform backend, as well as to provision the environment, but they don't have to be the same. And so in an enterprise environment, what you'll often see, excuse me, is your state files being set up in a different resource group, maybe even a different subscription. And then your access to, to that particular back end is going to be very limited as a developer, you know, and so maybe you won't be able to provision or access production state files without a break glass kind of activity um, in order to get access to it, like privileged, privileged access management, like you hit the pin button, you get temporary credentials so that you can run a Terraform plan. Um, but uh, you know you're you're probably going to have a back end for your production environments, and then you're going to have a back end for your non prod or you know you might have many back ends. Um, they you, storage accounts are free essentially, right? And state files are not you know gratuitously large, right? So um, it's really just a matter of like how what the operating overhead is of man maintaining all these, uh, all these storage accounts everywhere. Right. Um, but typically that's going to be, you know, you got non prod state and you got prod state and there's an RBAC boundary within Azure around the resource group, around the subscription, around the storage account, um, within the prod that that's, that's storing the prod state. And then the RBAC boundary around the non prod state is different. Um, and so in the non-prod state, you would probably as a developer expect to be able to do things like run a, a Terraform plan locally, right? Using your own interactive credentials, AZ login. Um, whereas in prod, you would not have that same expectation without some break glass type of activity. So I hope that helps answer your question. Um, object. Anyways, I hope you found my answer to Abjit helpful in how to create an RBAC boundary and a security boundary around your Terraform state files by separating the credentials or the identity that you use to provision your infrastructure from the credential that you use to access your backend. Almost all Terraform providers, be it AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, support this. And just like everything with each of these providers, there's subtle nuances that are different from provider to provider in terms of how you make this possible. If you're enjoying this content and want to see more, make sure you smash like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, next time you see one of my live streams, hop on and ask your own question, just like Abjit. Until next time, this is the Azure Terraformer signing off.